Angling in Iowa is a tradition dating back centuries, as our state's rivers and lakes are habitat to a wide variety of species. Iowa's border rivers, the Missouri and the Mississippi, are major water systems teeming with a cornucopia of angling opportunities. Out west, the Iowa DNR has reopened the fishing season for a mysterious species known for its prehistoric look, the long-snouted paddlefish. Along the western rim of Iowa, at the doorstep of the Luss Hills, rests the Missouri River. Its channeled and controlled path meandering far less than its brethren, the Mississippi, to the east. But underwater, the Missouri is still home to many surprises, including a fish with ancient origins. It's a long-billed river species many Iowans have never seen with their own eyes. It's just a really cool experience. It's a super unique fish. They've been around for millions and uh, millions of years. Um, um, it's just a rare opportunity that you, you don't get to see every, everywhere in the state. For Ryan Hupfeld and John Christensen, both part of the Iowa DNR fisheries staff, the Missouri River is both an ecosystem and their job site. The habitat and everything on the Missouri has changed a lot from it was historically, so it's, it's a challenging resource definitely to work on compared to some of the other resources in the state. Um, it's very fast. Uh, moving water, so definitely uh, you got to respect that uh, when you're out there working on it or any of our users in Iowa that are using the river, there's a, a danger there that uh, you need to be aware of. In late winter and early spring, DNR fisheries biologists navigate the river's eddies and bends in search of habitat brimming with paddlefish. The distinctive fish are known for their elongated snouts, long gill covers, and bodies resembling a shark. Their most common habitat in Iowa is along our state's major border rivers, the Mississippi and the Missouri. You got the net forward a little bit. Really unique looking fish. Um, kind of a prehistoric fish. They have this rostrum that sticks out on the front and they actually have what they call Ampulaea lorenzini, which help them uh, track uh, plankton, which is what they eat modifications on their gills are, are what they use to strain mostly plankton and other small aquatic invertebrates into their back of their mouth and uh, that's mostly primarily what they feed on is, is, uh, is plankton. Little spots all the way up on their rostrum that's what I was talking about when it's called ampullae of Lorenzini it's kind of a sensory or, sensory organ form I guess um, shark have them um, and uh, it kind of just helps them uh, detect the plankton field so it allows them to be more of a, an efficient feeder. Hubfeld and Christensen set out a series of gill nets for quickly capturing any fish that comes in contact with the 50-foot lines. For our production crew it was a well-rounded tour of fish along the Missouri River. So this is a, a long nose gar. Crazy teeth on them there. They're kind of a pain to get out of the net too. Here's a common carp, a non-native species. This one's a smallmouth buffalo. This is a native fish. This one's, there's another species called a big mouth buffalo, but the smallmouth buffalo has been more pre prevalent. The mouth points down. Gill netting gives us an opportunity to, to catch these fish and, and monitor their health and see where they're utilizing some of these habitats on the river. Species, kind of a new invader. It's the big head carp, very similar to the silver carp, which is the ones you see on TV jumping all the time. They have like they have real fine gill rakers, just like a paddlefish. Um, the silver carp's gill rakers actually actually look like a sponge, so they're able to filter different sizes of plankton. Asian carp, like these temporarily captured by the Iowa DNR gill nets, are a relatively new concern for fisheries biologists. Their voracious appetites can change water habitat and squeeze out other fish populations. It's just one of the many reasons Hupfeld and Christensen are monitoring native species like paddlefish through extensive banding and electronic tagging efforts. One other kind of key characteristic of, is their tail. They have a heterocircled tail. There's actually really no bones uh, in these fish, um, but it is pretty solid. 
um, and hard structure. And actually inside of these, it's almost kind of a little uh, jelly type structure. And I think that's part of their sensory uh, system that they use. Paddlefish with their grayish blue exterior and unique snout line slowly mature into adulthood over a six to seven year period. The state record still rests from 1981, when a 107-pound paddlefish was caught in these very same Missouri River waters near Onawa. That's nearly triple the size of some paddlefish caught on this gill netting expedition. But shortly after that state record fish was caught in 1981, an open fishing season on Missouri River paddlefish was shelved for nearly 30 years, when it reopened in 2015. Anglers do really enjoy going after this fish and also harvesting the fish to eat them. Um, they're very good fish to eat. DNR fishery staff have carefully monitored interest in the late winter and early spring paddlefish season over the past three years, as anglers, utilizing a snagging method, have harvested roughly 500 specimen. The main channel of the Missouri River is too rapid for snagging efforts, but anglers often find success in side pools or deep overwintering holes. It's where DNR fishery staff direct their efforts as well. And we also take length and weight to look at uh, new year classes coming in. 6.96. Or changes in relative weight with the onset of Asian carp, we we're concerned about their um, relative weights and condition factors. And then also um, we're tagging fish, looking at movements, individual growth rates, and then um, potentially down the road you could get at a uh, population estimate. Zero, nine, three. It's an uh, important species to protect and make sure it's uh, sustainable for future generations to enjoy as well. Cruising along the Missouri River's border with Nebraska, deep piles of leftover sand and debris are still visible from the historic floods of 2011. While the record flooding event was disastrous for cropland and infrastructure, paddlefish were rejuvenated by additional spawning grounds. It's one of the many reasons the Iowa DNR continues to monitor fish populations, behavior, and habitat along a river system best known as our state's western border.